this is the uh, second in a series of uh, tutorials that we plan to do on, on using uh, the Taxon Works uh, platform. And so today we're going this in the second tutorial, uh, we're going to be looking at sources and doing various things with sources. Now, for most purposes, sources in Taxon Works are publications. There are publications in the in the scientific literature. There are other kinds of sources. There can be, you know, a person can be a source for some piece of information, uh, or some images, or or something like that. But in general, what we're going to be working with uh, in this tutorial are publications. So uh, again, here we are at the basic Taxon Works uh, homepage. And these are my favorite. Uh, these are my favorite cards. And the the the, the most useful one, perhaps, uh, that are, or at least that I use all the time uh, in working with sources, is called a source hub. It's 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 down at the bottom of my it's down at the bottom of my list. So if we go to the source hub, uh, we first of all we have a smart search field here. So we can uh, enter just a, a telegraphic abbreviation for a source. These are papers that I've published with John Noyes. Okay, and so maybe you know what we wanted to look at was uh, this one here. Okay, so there's a there there's a source. Notice, notice that this is a basically an abstract from a scientific scientific meeting. Now, the nice thing about the UCD project is because John Noyes had aggregated or had been gathering all these sources over uh, his entire career, we have incorporated basically all of the sources that UCD London was based on. It's, I think, over 20,000 sources. They're all in Taxon Works, and by and large, in, in this project, Sources are not shared across projects, but in, in, in this case, they're all uh, there and they're PDFs associated with uh, most of them. So it's a, it's a tremendous, it's a tremendous resource. So what, if we wanna enter a new, a new source, the, there's a, I think there's a new source card or I just usually do it from the source hub here. So if we enter a, a new source, then we get this, we get the screen here with a bunch of different fields in it. And uh, so these are the fields that are associated with BibTeX, with the BibTeX uh, source uh, convention. These are all the BibTeX uh, source fields. And, and there's quite a lot of them, only a few of which you'll use, you know, for any, any particular source, only a handful. So there's the type of source, whether it's an article, a book, in book is a chapter in a, in, in, in a book. So the chapter could have one set of authors and the editors of the book could be another set of, another set of authors, et cetera. And here's a field for the title. We're gonna enter a couple of sources in, in, uh, in a minute. So the, the easiest way to, to enter a source is to use the, the crossref uh, function. Crossref, I guess, is, a, is an aggregator of uh, literature uh, up there in the cloud somewhere, and it's, it's pretty complete. And so if you have a DOI, digital, whatever that stands for, for a source, uh, and, you, and you, can, you can use that. So we're going to enter, we're going to do this paper. I'll just show you very briefly. Influence of Weaver Ant, uh, yada, 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 <clears throat> mealybug parasitism by parasitoids in the journal of biological control. Uh, so this thing does have uh, a DOI. You see it's up at the top here. Maybe I'll make this a little bigger. Okay. You're going to want to get rid of that space, but I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste that DOI and then close this screen. So if I hit the cross ref tab, I get this 
DOI box down here. And so I cut and paste it in and get rid of any spaces. And hopefully this will work, it worked yesterday. Okay, we get that nice little chime, which means that it worked. Maybe you heard it, maybe you didn't. So notice that all this stuff has been pasted in there. As Matt said one day, we get all this for free. So you need to kind of cross check it, make sure it's all okay, but it usually it does a pretty good job. Now, one thing is italics and scientific names. There's a nice little tool here that if we highlight the, uh, the scientific name and hit uh, italics, it puts the, uh, I guess those are HTML or whatever uh, symbols to start italics and stop italics. And uh, notice that it knows the journal, Journal of Biological Control. The authors are down here as a verbatim text field. And they may, they may or may not be in the, in the, in the author table. They, in this case, they probably aren't. If you're, if, you're, if you're curating or adding a taxonomic paper in which there's new taxa described or other nomenclatural actions, you probably want to be sure that they're in the author's table. And so I'm just going to go down here and <clears throat> pick the first source. Okay, he's, he or she is not in there, so we can we can add them here. Okay, so now you see this 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 person is is now uh, in the authors table. So we might as well go ahead and do all of them. There's the second one. Again, this is mostly important. We don't really need to do it with this paper. It's mostly important for uh, uh, taxonomic papers, but just to show you how to how to do it. Or you could be we could be cutting and pasting these out of the out of the PDF. We've got three authors. I think there's only one more. Oh, I guess that's it. Okay. Everything else looks pretty good. It's got the, uh, the date of publication, the volume, it, it's, it's all there. So now notice up here at the top, there's a, a, a yellow rectangle, a warning sign. You have unsaved changes. Uh, some places in Taxon Works, there's an auto save button that you can check and it will automatically save changes and you go. Uh, here there is not. So we're gonna save this now. Now we've created the source, okay? There it is, uh, influence of, 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 of lever ant. Now there's two more things we, we probably wanna do. And uh, <clears throat> one is that we use, we make extensive use of what we call tags in, in, in taxon works. These are, uh, these are things that are associated either with sources or other things too, like images, but uh, we're commonly using them associated with, with sources. So if I hit this radial annotator button here, okay, there's a tags slice. And, and that allows me to add uh, tags to the, uh, to the source. So these are the, the ones that I use all the time. And uh, because we've now got, forget, we're, we're getting up on 300 sources in uh, taxon works that have been added but not curated yet, uh, we have a set of tags. Here are uh, the tags I've got in my, in my pin board. So these are the ones I use all the time. Source unprocessed, source being processed, or there's a source process uh, complete. And then we're tagging papers as to whether they have nomenclatural acts in them or, or not. So uh, in this case, the source is not processed and there's no nomenclatural acts, okay? It's just about the natural history of this particular uh, species. So I've added the two sources now. 
The other thing I want to do is put the PDF in there. So I go back to the to the Bibtex annotator at the top here and click documentation. Okay, and there there is a uh, now it's added a a PDF of the uh, of the document to uh, to the to the source. Hmm. Looks like it's the wrong one though. Oh well. I guess if you were doing this for real, you would add the correct uh, uh, source. I seem to have gotten my wires crossed a bit here. But again, I'm going to just go ahead and delete this for now because it's it's not the PDF associated with that with that source, but uh, it's basically drag and drop into this field here from your desktop. Uh, or if you click on this, it, you, get a, you get an image of your desktop or you know, your computer and you, know, you can select the, you can select the, PDF, the PDF from there. Okay. Up at the upper right here, there's a back to source hub uh, icon. We could add a, a, another new source. I think we'll go ahead and do one more. And uh, this is one uh, for which there is no DOI associated. It's a species by uh, Ab Rabu and uh, Greg Evans on the genus Incarcia in, in Egypt. So I'm going to move this off. Uh, I've got two monitors going here so that I can kind of cut and paste uh, out of this. So this is an article. And I'm just going to see if I can paste the title in there. There it is. OK. Put Incarcia in italics. Uh, these authors should be in. Yeah, Shaban Ab Rabdu. So that's the senior author. And then uh, Evans, Greg, Gregory A. Evans, second author. Uh, then we get down to the serial. This is a uh, this is a smart search field for any serials in in the uh, serials table. So this is and again Egyptian Journal of Plant Protection Research Institute. This one that's the correct journal. So you see, you only have to type in enough stuff for Taxon Works to find it. Okay. Uh, the year on this one is 2019. I don't think they give a date of publication. They don't. Uh, so we'll just leave it at that. And then the, the volume is two. The number is two. The pages are 217 to 221. Okay. So that's it. That's, that's, the, that's the source. We'll save it. And then we're going to go ahead and tag it. No nomenclature allowed, source unprocessed. So here's another one for Luke Crestline to do. And this time we'll upload the correct PDF. Which is Ab Rabdu and Evans. There it is. Uh, so now there's a PDF associated with, with, with this source. Okay, I'm gonna do one more thing in this tutorial, and that is uh, look at the filter sources task, which is an extremely powerful way of, of sorting through uh, the literature in your project and, and finding things. Uh, so here's the filter sources task. So first of all, we're going to look at sources that are both in the either in the project or or not. So I may have misspoke. I think sources are shared between projects. PDFs on sources are not, to be uh, more uh, 
precise about things. So we can look for text, for example, uh, anything with the genus uh, uh, Marietta in either the title or any of the fields in the, in the source. So we're going to look at things that are in the project and let's see what we get. Well, there's a whole bunch of papers uh, associated, uh, you know, on, on the genus, on the genus Marietta. So we'll go back. Maybe I want to find all the sources for the family uh, aphelinity that, that have not been processed yet. So there, we can scroll down. Notice you can, there's all kinds of search fields here. You can search for, you know, sources that were with particular authors, start date, end date, particular journals. Uh, you can play around with this stuff. But let's just look for papers on, on aphelinity for which uh, have been added since we moved uh, Universal Chalcedonia database over to Taxon Works in 2019. Okay, so there's not so very many. There's eight, eight, eight papers that are in the system now. Notice there's, there's PDFs associated with all of them. Uh, they're in the project here. We could, we could pull up a PDF here. If you hit the PDF icon, you go to the PDF viewer and you can download the, you can, there's a download a button there that will download the PDF to your, to your browser. We can uh, output a, a, a list of these in, in, in any uh, a format you like. Well, pretty much any format you like. Ho Jung mentioned the Zoe keys format. So now that this, this is formatted, all this will format all these sources uh, in the Zoe keys format. It'll take a second. It shouldn't be taking this long. Well, it should work anyway. Notice that filter sources is in the source hub too. Uh, so we can go back to filter sources. One more thing I want to show you. Uh, let's look for uh, papers on aphelinity that have not been processed. Again, we'll get the same list. And you can download a CSV file, which is, a, I guess, a comma delimited or tab delimited uh, thing that you can open in, in Excel or your favorite spreadsheet and you know, work, work with the information uh, locally. So there's a lot of very powerful, very powerful uh, features here. And with that, I think that's probably all we want to try and do in a tutorial number two.